I think that's hard for everybody. That kind of like decision making or decisiveness is what pushes you into the deep end mm -hmm. of starting your own business. Right. Right. And then you're just kind of consistently doing that mm -hmm. if you want to continue to move forward. And I think most people, that's where the fear kicks in, right? The right. fear kicks in in the beginning where you go, I don't know. What if it fails? What if my wife or husband or whomever leaves me over it? Mm -hmm. What if this? What if that? What if we don't have any money? What if, like, instead of just going, I'm doing it, fuck yeah. it, done. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. So I'd say, like, day to day management, um, I've learned that that's not me, right? I'm not, if it was me, we would be fucked, <laughs> right? <laughs>
it was the coolest thing. And I think, you know, fast forwarding after all the films and having the idea for St. Archer, I was like, I want to recreate on a mission. But I had a lot of friends that were pro skaters because of making movies and, and pro snowboarders like Todd Richards and Pat Moore and a couple other guys. Yeah. And so I just wanted it to be on a mission on steroids because right. it just made such an impact on me that these guys actually own the fucking business. Yeah. That um, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And that's what you want to support. It was more common in skating, right? Like, you know, where it's skater owned, like girl and, and all the different brands. They've, they've always been skater owned, right? right. Um, and But surfing wasn't as much like that, right? right. Like not not like the prominent athletes yeah um and i felt like beer was the one consistent product that we were all consuming and you know pacifico and paps and bud and coors and they were like marketing to our culture mm -hmm. but no one cared right and i just went like i don't give a fuck that there's a hundred foot tall pacifico on the beach at the u.s open right nobody cares nobody cares right and i and I felt like we could have a brand that people would actually care. Yeah. And I think um, like Chris Malloy gave me a thicker than water T-shirt. Mm -hmm. I was like, Dude, I'm never taking this thing off, <laughs> right? Like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. like I'm never. That's it. I'm never taking this thing off. And yep. and like you know, it was the same kind of the same process with P Rod behind the bar at St. Archer. Yeah. Like if you walk in and Paul hands you a beer and goes. Thanks for coming. We're really proud of it. Yeah. You're fucking locked yeah, in. You're not going anywhere. No. I have a funny story about the St. Archer uh, tap room when you guys first started. But before we get into that, I, uh, growing up in Ventura, it must have been mm -hmm. kind of a trip. I mean, yeah. being, you know, filming the Malloys and Bobby and Dane and all mm -hmm. those guys, like, if, if they're going to use your clips, like, that's, you're getting validated pretty quick with yeah. those guys. How does that, how yeah. did that help you build your network and, you know, yeah, you know, what's funny is like, so when we, not really, really, yeah, not really, you know, I think like back then, you know, uh, the, the Malloy, like Dan and Keith and Chris and Timmy and Dane was young, so it wasn't, right. um, and so was Bobby, but like those guys were like larger than life right and you're filming them it's cool but you're like just this kid like tagging mm -hmm. along at the beach right kind of like we're we're lucky you're lucky that you're even fucking here filming us dude so don't even trip yeah, like yeah. right so it didn't you don't nah. feel like that really no. made a difference for you no nothing no i i i think like um now taylor knox on the other hand mm. that was a big deal okay you know um and Taylor Steele, right? right. Um, but Taylor Knox was a huge deal and is still one of my closest friends. Right. But when I made Arc, you know, Taylor, you know, he's been involved with every business. You know, it's funny. So we raised $3 million. I might be jumping ahead a little bit. But when we raised $3 million to do St. Archer, I think everybody thought that it was all athlete money. Right. I'd say only probably like, 700 grand of that was athletes. Okay. Um, okay. So I got to pause right there. Yeah. So you never started a business. No, no, never did anything in None. beer, never worked in beer, never worked in alcohol, nothing. nothing. And you're like, I'm doing a go, beer. Who the fuck was your first phone call <laughs> when you're, this pops in your head. I'm going to start a beer brand. I've never done anything in the mm -hmm. world. Who, uh, did you, who did you call first? So the first person I ever told was Mikey Taylor. Okay. Um, I was about to make a skate film and Mikey was one of the guys in it. Um, I made a surf film called union express with Timmy Curran mm -hmm. and I was going to do a similar type thing with Mikey. And we were down here in San Diego actually. Mm -hmm. And I had just been in Puerto Rico the week before Mikey and I were in a hotel room and I, and he, um, Mike Mo Capaldi called him about doing a sunglasses business, which is now glassy and, very famous mm -hmm. and it's killing it. And, and that's kind of like what he's done with his life now. But, um, I'm all the yeah, fuck shades, right? Right. Like, like no one's, you know, shit. It's just another deal. Right. Yeah. Um, for you to jump in on that, like, what about beer? I had this idea for like a craft beer. What about beer? And he was like, let's do it like that. Just like that. 
and Mikey um, has an entrepreneurial spirit. Yep. And like, it's it's funny because it's the one emotional story about Saint Archer mm -hmm. is really Mikey and and Paul Rodriguez because like, those two guys put in two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, basically in me. Each or no together. Together. Um, Paul put in two hundred grand and Mikey put in fifty. That's nuts. Um, which was nuts. Yeah. In me. Yeah. Who did like you said. Doesn't know shit about beer yeah, and doesn't know anyone in the beer business and has never built a business and didn't know what a capital raise was. Right. And they go, we got 250 K. We believe in you. And you know, that's uh, <laughs> that's a fucking big deal, man. Yeah. That's a huge deal. So yeah. you tell Mikey in the hotel room. Tell him. Yep. He's in. He's in. You guys call Paul. I'm like, dude, what about P rod? He's all dude. Let's hit him up. You call him right then. We call him the next morning. And what's he say? And we met Paul at a coffee bean. He loves coffee beans still. And he goes, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm in. And this is like P-Rod, like height of the run right. P-Rod, right? Like Paul's the face of Nike at this point, yeah. right? Um, and, and then those guys were down and it was like, it was one of those things. So I was making films. And I remember the, the guys were skating at the barracks and I met them down there in downtown LA and we went out to eat mm -hmm. and they were like, well, like, who's going to do this thing? You know, it'd been like a couple months and I was like, well, I mean, Paul's not going to stop being the face of Nike. Mm -hmm. Mikey was the face of DC shoes at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's me. So fuck yeah, I'll do it. So originally when you thought about the idea, you were like, I got to get a group of people together and then we're going to find somebody to do this thing and we're going to like support it and back it. And yeah, I'm going to so, like do the creative side. And like technically at first, when I had the idea, I hit up Keith Malloy. He said, no. You ever give CJ, him shit about, you C, ever give shit about yes. that? Yes. <laughs> CJ and Damian Hobgood both said no. You ever give him shit about that? I do. I just talked to Damien about it at the um, Camp Shred. I'm going to give him shit about that. Yeah, you well, should. I saw a photo of you guys. Yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> that was probably me, like, putting my arm around him after teasing like, him. Yeah. Um, and and Ross Williams. And he said no? And I don't even know if I got to Ross, because the other three <laughs> said the other three said no. And I, you know, I think that I was like, fuck. Yeah. Um, and then that's, I don't know. And then the idea to have guys invest mm -hmm. only really came from Mikey and Paul. I was like, well, if those dudes put money in, maybe like Taylor will and Knox and maybe Taylor Steele will. Right. And maybe Eric Costin will. And maybe, right? Like So those guys, those guys throwing their money down kind of gave you the confidence yeah. to go out there and be like, Yeah. They're in. And it was still like, I mean, I didn't know what a capital raise was. Right. And so it was crazy, man. <laughs> so, you know. So they're like, Yeah, cool, I got fifty, I got two hundred. And then, okay, so then now you started, you got to get all your fucking ducks in a row. Yeah. You got to get legal people involved, yep. draw all the contracts. Which we'd never done that. Never right. done an operating agreement. Never done a subscription agreement. I didn't know. We did a, a PPP, which is a private placement memorandum, hmm. where if you have investors that make less than a certain threshold, mm -hmm. you have to make a document telling them all of the pitfalls Oh, shit. of what an investment can be so they don't sue you in case it doesn't work out. They go, wait a minute, I'm not going to be a millionaire? Right. You're like, well, in here, but the government looks at you like you're sophisticated or not based on this financial threshold. Gotcha. So if you make $250,000 or less, yep. they say you're not sophisticated. Oh, you're like an accredited investor. Yes, yeah, so, right. Like so yeah. so, so I, you need to make them this. Got it. Um. And so we did that. And I mean, but then I had to go home and like tell my wife, this is what I'm doing, which was crazy. My daughter talking about kids. Yeah. My daughter was three and a half and my oldest son Beckham was six months old. And we were both Janine and I both um, from Ventura. Yeah. We're high school sweethearts. Right. So like, so that's all you've known. Yeah. That's all our friends are there. Our best friends are there still there. Yeah. Now one of them's here. But um, our families are there, right? My mom mm -hmm. lives in Ojai and like, right? Like um, her dad's in Ventura and, um, and I was like, hey, I'm going to start a craft beer called St. Archer and we're moving to San Diego. Mm -hmm. 
because it's the craft beer capital of the U.S. And I'm going to raise $3 million in what's called a capital raise. Where'd that guy, where did that idea come from? That like, was that like Mikey or Paul being like, Hey, we need to get like a lot of money together. Or was it, it was, just like you started researching shit or somebody. It's a good question. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we, so at first we were going to contract brew it. Okay. Um, it's funny. No one ever asked this one. It's a good one. Yeah. This was a, we were going to contract brew it. Cause I'm like, I don't know if fuck build a brewery. What the fuck does that mean? Right. I mean, that's a fucking daunting ass. It was 20,000 square feet. Right? I mean, it was insane. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying it's like, you've never done this and you're going to go build. I mean, I went to that tap room. It's <laughs> yeah. fucking massive. It was huge. I, you're like, that's your first go. It's so, like, so nuts. we, so we go to, um, so we, so we decide like we should contract brew this mm-hmm. and, we go to a brewery on the way to Mammoth, um, Indian Wells or something like that. It's on the, although it's on the way to like just outside of Bishop Mm -hmm. and, um, we go visit these guys and we're like, Oh, these guys can make our beer killer. This is like what they do. They make beer for people. Right. And then we'll figure out how to sell it. Not knowing a fucking thing about how to sell alcohol. (laughs) Um, so we, so we roll in and the guy starts talking to us and I'm like, and they go, so what kind of beer do you like? And and P Rod says, Yeah, I mean, my favorite beer is Bud Light Lime. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> just don't, don't let me let me do it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We're not doing Bud Light Lime, man. Right. We're doing a craft brewery, remember? Yeah. And uh, he's like, Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. And I, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm at, talking to the guy, and I'm like, so so we buy the beer from you. Yeah, tells me the price. And I'm like, how much do you usually sell a case of beer for to like the distributor if you can get them to do it? Right. And it it worked out to where we'd make like a quarter a case. And I'm like, so this is like the worst business idea ever. <laughs> and like, that's cool. We just came all the way the fuck out here. And yeah. And so we get back in the car and I'm sitting next to Paul and I'm like, we'll do this was this was a bad idea. Like this, so that's cool. Yeah, we this was dumb, and it was it was that's fine. We're, we'll go back to doing what we were doing, and and Paul goes, well, what is the other alternative? Right, it can't just be to not do it because other people do. You know, yeah. I'm like, well, the other alternative is to build a brewery, right? And like, we would need millions to do that. Like, where the fuck are we going to get millions of dollars to build a brewery? And and Paul goes, looks at me and goes, scared money don't make money, man. And I went, okay, we're doing it then. Right. And that's the story. I mean, that's like, that's how it happened. And then he was like, dude, we'll raise another million dollars and get Kim Kardashian to drink it. I'm all, okay, now you're getting carried away. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll like, we'll stick with the scared money. Don't make money deal. But, <laughs> yeah. um, and then that's, that was it. That was it. Like that was, that was it. And I went home and, and told Janine and I'm like, okay, we're, yeah, we're doing it. We're, we're going to move down here. And I moved down here and we didn't like Mikey and Paul were like, we put everything we had into doing St. Archer and Janine and I, we didn't have any money to begin with. I mean, dude, I'm making like surf and like skate and snowboard mm-hmm. film documentaries. Like <laughs> yeah. I didn't, we didn't have any money. Right. Moved down here and Mikey and Paul, mostly Paul was like helping me pay my utilities and like, it was crazy, man, because I was down here raising money, right. trying to find a building where to make it all right. um, and build it. I didn't know anything about building it. Right. Um, so you had to find somebody that was like living in that world that kind of knew how to set everything up for you, right? Yeah. And we, we started like finding, we started finding a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and there's like more people than it seems. But like the first big break of it all was stone. Right. And, and, you know, we, the CEO at the time and founder, Steve Wagner, um, was friends with a guy that I met with about investing. And the guy was like, yeah, you should hit up Steve Wagner. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's like saying, I want to start a clothing business. I should hit up Bob Hurley. Right. Right. Yeah. Bob Hurley is not getting back to you. The sweetest guy, but he's not emailing you back. Cause not gonna you want to do a t-shirt business in your garage. Yeah. I've never hit up somebody in the coffee business. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, uh, right. Yeah. You just feel weird. Yeah. And like, they're that, not uh, getting back to you. Right. Yeah. It's not, probably not. Right. Steve got back to me in two seconds. That's wild. And I was like, yeah, man, come, come to the brewery. Let's talk about it. Sick. And he liked it. And, and, um, and I still needed to finish raising money. Um, and we found a building and, um, and did it. Yeah. Yeah. 
So fast forward, you guys open up. Actually, that's probably a good time to tell my little tap room story. So we like, there was a dude. So we started out doing farmer's markets and we were next to this dude. I don't know. You might remember him. His name is Vess. And he used to whoop up like Thai food. Hmm. You guys would have him over there. He'd make food. Yep. People would be drinking, whatever. Yep. So we went over there to see him. We were obviously psyched to go see the whole tap room and shit. And Ken was your GM at the time. Kent, yeah. Kent? Yep. Yeah. He owns Salento Tequila with Taylor Steele now. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've seen him around town a yeah. couple times. But uh, Vess introduced us and whatever. And he went in the back and grabbed us two like flats of like just all the beers and sent us home. We were like Amazing. fired up. Dude. That's we're so like good. driving home. We're like, fuck. I actually have photos of it. That's right. But we were pumped. And like you said, like, yeah. and I think Taylor Knox was bartending that yeah. night. And it was like, dude, you go and you experience that and you're locked in. It's you're like, I don't think in. I dr- drink other beer yeah. for a while. No. <laughs> right. And like, that's the coolest thing about what you guys did was like you created this beer experience that people have been drink you know people have been drinking beer for fucking thousands of years for sure but you changed the experience yeah just with your whole marketing I appreciate created. that yeah yeah and honestly it's been a big inspiration for us being you know in this area action sports yeah you know heavily influenced here but um so fast forward you guys open the brewery yep things start to move. it went nuts it went just crazy right? yeah like I mean it was Day like. One instant right yeah it was a it was like we had a great team Mm -hmm. you know um i'm not i know what i'm not good at Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm good at hiring the best right and um we hired the best you know like the jeff hansen was our head of sales he was incredible he owns and runs harland and and a distribution business we started called scout Mm -hmm. um and then Kent, obviously, right, was our head of operations. Now he owns Salento. And yep. we had three of the best brewers in the country. And, um, you know, we had really, really great all-star squad. Yeah. And um, I think – and Kent and I knew – we knew each other from – he owned a DVD distribution business, Surf DVDs. No shit. So he bought – when Taylor Steele, Poor Specimen, mm-hmm. Taylor started – just um, distributing other people's films under the poor span, poor, poor specimen banner mm-hmm. and then turned it into steel house and Kent bought steel house from Taylor and started a DVD distribution business here in Lucadia. That's fucking um, awesome. So he was selling my surf films and I knew he knew how to like logistically run a business and manage. Right. So when I had the idea for St. Archer, I'm like, dude, I need you. How can, how can I convince you? And he was like in between, there was like shit going down with the people that bought his company. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how do I convince you to come run all the operations and, and everything for St. Archer? And he was like, I'm in. Sick. So you got a couple key people. Yeah. Was Jeff was the big one. Was he working in? Yeah. Jeff's from beer. Okay. Yeah. He, he was, did sales on the West for Boston beer, Sam Adams. Mm -hmm. Then he was the VP of sales for Coronado. Okay. And I stole him from there. Got it. And he was the one. He taught me the beer business. So you get these couple of people and then you're doing creative. Yeah. You're doing marketing. Yep. I still am doing the same thing I was doing then now. You're, you are personally making the film, shooting the yep. films. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, all the films, <laughs> the gram, everything. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, so I still, like, I still do all the same stuff I did then. Yeah. Um, now it's much bigger but it's yeah doing the same stuff that's awesome yeah so you guys start selling you're in every bar you're in every grocery store yeah primarily every bar yeah every bar was like we had three thousand draft handles like at at the height of our run from santa barbara to the mexico border that's shit incredible Yeah. yeah that's nuts yeah so you guys are crushing at what point does the big payday yeah come into play two and a half years so who, how did that happen? Yeah. So we were like two years in, yeah, two years in and we, we had raised about between bank, we had a little bit of bank debt, mm-hmm. um, not much like a million bucks. Mm-hmm. And I had raised another 8 million, um, just privately in two years, just like, just to keep going, like adding tanks. We couldn't keep up. Right. Um, and I needed 10 more million and, um, I hired on an investment bank to help us raise the 10 million. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of craft beers had sold in that like first two year window. And I was like, whoa, I, 
crazy. These things, people like buy these things. Yeah. Gnarly. Like I don't. Okay. And then, and then right when I was saying that a friend called and was like, Hey man, I heard, um, Budweiser wants to buy St. Archer. And I went, really? Like that's, we're two years old. Yeah. Like what What do you mean? Yeah. And then, um, someone from Bud called and like, Hey, we'd love to talk to you about it. This is like what we're thinking for an offer. Blah, blah, Nah, I'm good. I'm good. And then I called our investment banker and went, you'll never believe who just called me. Do you think we could actually sell this thing? And he said, I mean, maybe. And I said, well, I'm going to, I I don't want you guys. I don't want you guys to put together the deck. I'll do it. I'll do it all. And I want it to look like our brand and right. you'll put together some PowerPoint bullshit. Bunch of writing and then shit. like when, 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 if, if people want to take the meeting, I want to do it. Right. I don't want you like representing the brand. Like you could sit there, but like, don't say anything. <laughs> right. Like I'll, I want to, I want to do it. Right. And why, um, why, why do you want to do it? What? Because you didn't want people to say some weird shit about the yeah, brand. Yeah. And I just feel like the... yeah, that and like, I'm comfortable in the negotiation of it. Yeah. And I felt like I knew what our brand was worth. So when you started out, you had no idea or no vision to like build this thing and then offload it or was that in the back of your head yeah i mean i think so i think anytime you take people's money you're like okay we got to figure out a way to like make people money right right like or return their capital for sure so did that make you nervous like taking money from your friends no it didn't no wow yeah i don't know it's weird kind of yeah you'd think that like you would lose sleep i think people want to hear you say that yeah I don't though. Yeah. And I've raised 60 million right over the last 10 <clears throat> years. Yeah. And I've never lost any sleep over it. I feel it the ju- same way. It's just like yeah. this is what it is. Like it, you, you know like these investments are risky. Yeah. You know and like you know what you're getting into. Yeah. And I'm in the deep end just as much as you are if not more. Oh yeah, your reputation. Dude. Yeah, I mean everything's in there. I've I've had yeah. everything from money to my. Re- I mean, what else would I do? Right, exactly. If you fuck up, you're right? Fine. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like I don't just lose fifty grand. You're right. Like, I don't, what the fuck would I do? Right. Right, and so, you know, it's funny like thinking about the end of Saint Archer and everything that it what all the stories. You know, mm-hmm. it's crazy how many people take credit for Saint Archer. Yeah. Like it, it happens all the time. You know, right. people in the alcohol business, like I hear all this shit people say. Right. They put it in their decks. They founded fucking St. Archer. And really? They, people that I, used to work for Dude, you? I've read it magazines. There's one person in particular that worked for us, mm-hmm. like did graphic design and fucking takes credit for the business. That's wild. And has lied. Yeah. To yeah. like raise money and like it's bananas yeah and it's tough like when you think about that like dude like when you when people like make up all that shit Mm -hmm. and someone just told me as i was coming in here and so it made me think of it like you you like discredit everything that you did it's kind of gnarly to do that you know it's one thing if you don't know me and you're just lying talking shit to get a job i get it (laughs) like it's all good (laughs) it's still fucking weird. yeah it's still (laughs) fucked up but like i get it you know i did this well no you're not really right? right but like but like when you know what what I put my family through, right? Like what I put myself through. Mm-hmm. Like you were there. Mm-hmm. That's pretty gnarly, for sure. That's pretty gnarly. So Bud calls. They say, "Hey, we'd like to give you there. We're thinking about offering you guys this." You go back to your investment banker. Yep. He's like, "Oh fuck, okay." Yep. And then what? And then um, uh, Miller Coors. It was Miller Coors at the time, mm-hmm. and Bud and Pabst all started bidding on the brand. They reach out to you or you guys reach out to them and say, hey, yeah. So the like investment kind of a- banker hit them up. Yeah. And then they were all interested. Yeah. And then it just went bananas. That must've been a fucking experience. It was. <laughs> and I feel like I, I wish I would have, you know, I think it was so fast. Like mm-hmm. everything was so fast. It yeah. was, it was only two and a half years. We only yeah. owned the business for two and a half years. You know, like that's crazy. Yeah. That's just, it's insane. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like, you know, looking back to there, if you think about like the craft beer, alcohol, like acquisition, M and a window, mm-hmm. if you go from like the late nineties, when stone or mid to late nineties, when stone and ballast point were like really coming on, that's when they started. Mm-hmm. 
And then all the way to now, 2023, how many years has there really been M&A activity? Mm -hmm. Like substantial. Right. Three years. Yeah. Three years out of the last 30 had a buying window of these brands. And I just fucking happened to be in the window. Yeah. That's... That's a trip, dude. I mean, you got to have the right brand, right? You can't just say it's all luck. Yeah. Right? Because there's a lot of people who didn't sell them. Right. But it's... It's pretty crazy, man. That it's like, it is so true that timing is literally everything. Yeah, that's a fucking wild. Okay, so you guys end up selling it. Yeah. What was it? Ended up being like close to a hundred. We did pretty well, man. Yeah. I think there's funny. There's been like a lot of. Um, it wasn't a hundred million, and it wasn't thirty million. It was like. Yeah. Yeah. Did it you- was closer to the hundred. The the what the deal was worth. Does that trip right? you out when you think about that? Are you just like, yeah? What the but then like that that's what the deal was worth yeah i know for sure it was worth like in the perfect world it like we would have hit it all the way right it Mm -hmm. wasn't a hundred but it was like it was it was up there right but like if we would have hit everything and that was probably the biggest learning lesson right they they bought 90 percent of the brand and Mm -hmm. there was like a 10 percent earn out and um you know hitting that ultimate number which is like if it exceeds the plan yeah the chances of doing that are like come to find out, dude, you're slim to none. Right. Right. So like everybody did really well. Yeah. Did we maximize the potential of what it could have been? No. Yeah. Right. Like right when I, right when they switched the brand over to Reyes, which isn't the most strong distributor in the bars, mm-hmm. it killed the business overnight. Damn. And then we had no chance at, at hitting the earn out and and you were still involved at that point. Yeah, and I was there like, for I was there for about a year and a half. Shit. And then I just quit. You're just fucking. Over yeah, it. I just quit. I was like, I'm not gonna have a front row seat to watching my brand die. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just not. I just I can't even like, I can't even like live through it. Right. And and we everybody had done well and um yeah. I just couldn't do it, man. You had mentioned in that other podcast that I listened to that if you were to you would do it all over again the same result mm-hmm. everything because of what it did for a lot of the people that were mm-hmm. involved financially yeah what like what did it feel like to to go up to because they're like paul and mikey those mm-hmm. guys are like they make money like they, they make probably, tons of money they could but just in their normal life yeah. they could lose that money and be fine right for sure there's got to, there was probably some people that were involved that were like this money's a lot of fucking money for Fuck me yeah yeah and then you come with the check that yeah, changes was, their life like yeah. tell me about a lot that of, yeah that was Probably one of the best weeks of my professional life yeah. um, was handing out checks and having people cry, yeah. having wives, you know, kiss and hug me, right? They're yeah. like, it was a huge fucking deal. I mean, yeah, you're handing somebody a check for three, four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars yeah, out of the blue, <laughs> right? Could some you people, talk about like these Some people seven it? figures. Yeah. Were you able to talk about like what was going on with the people that were... So yeah, they didn't know Nobody anything. knew anything. So you just really show up at their door with yeah. like a fucking check. And I did it that way like on purpose. Just to fucking stun them. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> Dude, that's badass. It, it was fun. And I would say like, what did it, like, that was awesome. But you know, what did it feel like for me? Like not much. Yeah. Like in terms of you making money? Yeah, not much. Really, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I didn't really, I think what it did, I mean, obviously it was life changing. Right. Right. Um, but For me, I guess I kind of learned that I was an entrepreneur and Mm -hmm. not a business owner Mm -hmm. and not an employee, right? right? Those are the three kind of distinctions and none are better or worse. It's just who you are. And I think starting St. Archer, that doesn't, that's not an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You're a business owner. You started a business, right? Right. Um, There's plenty of folks around here that are business owners. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people call themselves entrepreneurs because I think it, Sounds better from Instagram or something. I don't know. Yeah. But like, really, it's um, that's what I learned from it. Mm-hmm. And I never did it for the money. Right. Like ever. Yeah. Um, I did it for the competition of it all. Yeah. And like, and to prove people wrong. Yeah. So you have a chip on your shoulder still? Fucking A. <laughs> yeah. Where's that come from? Um... I think never like really maybe like totally kind of having the approval, Mm -hmm. right? Like my films always did well. They weren't the best. Right. 
you know, like I was friends with everyone, but kinda, Mm. it was never like completely in, I think there's people that they just go, yeah, this person's like amazing and they'll do right. Mm -hmm. Even when I sold St. Archer people like, and dude, a lot of people have said the nicest things, Mm -hmm. but fuck him, dude. He got lucky. Mm. I love hearing all that. Yeah. Now I'm what 10 brands. The luck is out the window, but like, yeah. especially people here in North County, mm-hmm. I'd say this is where a majority of it is. Mm-hmm. Like all the people that were like, yeah, dude, he can't fucking do it. And blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. It's all around here. Yeah. It's which jealous. I enjoy the most. Yeah. It's but yeah, it never, it doesn't take much for me either. I'll make up stories in my head sometimes oh, even for sure. make them more dramatic just to get fucking fired up. Yeah. It's like, it's pretty gnarly. So St. Archer closes. Yep. You have, did, have you started scout yet? Uh, no. So that was Harlan and scout were about four years later. We did villager coconut water. Okay. Um, which you guys had on your dude. I was, I'm kind of bummed. I know. Like, where the fuck? That I was know. the best coconut water. I There's know. Like Thank you. Harmless coconut. You guys were like my yep. two favorite. Yep. I know. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, again, like not learning, like the beer success does not have anything to do with um, non-alcoholic. Right. And Jeff Hansen and I started that one together, Villager. Mm-hmm. And it was great. I mean, yeah. and then COVID hit and we started a, ju- a, ki- a little kid's brand called Little Villager, which is organic juice boxes. Okay. And we were like the number one uh, selling kids juice in Walmart. Holy shit. And like it had been like three years. And I think all the investors, everybody, like COVID hit, everyone got scared and we needed more money and um, nobody wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. And and I, I was like, I guess in that moment, actually I was up trying to raise money in San Luis Obispo. Mm-hmm. And I was in a meeting and the, the guy who I was with was like, so what, what's the plan? Mm-hmm. And I literally couldn't answer him. I was like, I don't fuck. Actually, you know what, man? I don't know. <laughs> that, that's a bad answer. Right. No, but I in mean, that, that's true. If that's the I, truth, I just that's didn't, I like, didn't believe it anymore. I was like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. And, um, I was up there. I had already started Ashland because mm-hmm. Ashland started a week before COVID hit. And um, Wes Vandevort, who's our now vice president, um, he and his wife own the Vandevort mm-hmm. shop. Yeah, yeah. Um, our wives were friends, and that's how Wes and I met. Mm-hmm. And Wes was with me on this villager coconut water meeting. Mm-hmm. And um, we're walking back, and he's like, dude, what happened? Um, like he witnessed. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Like, I've never even seen you. Like you, like, ju- you just yeah. raised like $2 million for Ashland in like five seconds. Mm-hmm. Like I've never seen you do that. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I just don't, it's not there. I, it's not there. Like, I don't know what to say. I, I don't feel right about taking people's money and not believing right. there's something at the end. And we were walking downtown San Luis and I'm like, fuck that. I'm not going to lose everybody's money. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn villager into a canned cocktail Mm -hmm. and jump it back into the alcohol segment. And I'm going to try and roll it in with fucking Ashland and fuck that. I'm going to take everybody with me. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. So everybody that was a part of villager now has their equity in that same equity in Ashland and all the new brands I've started. Cool. So like, I wasn't willing to just go, hey, boys, Sorry, we lost. Like, no <laughs> fucking way, man. That's just, like, yeah. not an option, yeah. right? And so um, I just, ch- like, changed the entire, closed the coconut water down, sold all the shit. Yeah. I mean, like, it was gnarly, man. Yeah. And then in that time, we had started Harlan, too. So I'd started mm. Harlan a year and a half before we launched Ashland. Okay. So Harlan started and then uh, we started Scout at the same time. Got it. Yeah. And Scout was just out of necessity in terms of like no. trying to build your alcohol. No, I or? think Jeff and I, um, I think we, we always would be frustrated with uh, distributors. Oh, okay. And we always were like, man, we could, and Anthony Levis who worked with us at, um, 
St. Archer mm-hmm. in sales, we, you know, we, I think we kind of thought like we could do it better. Yeah. We know how to build brands. We actually are the brands that we're trying to sign. Like we're St. Archer and mm-hmm. all these different businesses. And, um, and it was the right call. Like we brought yeah. on great brands. We like June shine from yeah. the very beginning and, um, you know, a bunch of different, you know, we had society, we had, society. we had all these different brands yeah. and Harlan was, you know, the one that kind of like, you know, it did we we did, and then we had Ashland, yeah, which was huge. Man, a lot of stuff. Yeah, dude, a lot of stuff. Okay, so where did the name Saint Archer come from, real quick? I wanted to name my son Archer. Okay. And my wife said no. <laughs> so you named your beer company after? Him. Yeah. I'm okay. Like, well, that's he, awesome. It ended up being Beckham, so it was you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was a great name. So yeah, it was good. Which is a nice segue to uh, Wings and Arrow. Yeah. What's Here we on? are. Yeah, dude. Back I, in the saddle. Did you see the billboard? At, oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I drive by all the time. And yeah. It was it was initially kind of your holding company. Yeah. Right. And then And then now, so like the news that's not news yet, but it kind of is, is when we were going through we had all these brands and Ashland is gone. Like Ashland's probably three times bigger than St. Archer ever was. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. Because you guys are in Costco. It's everywhere. You're man. fucking it, everywhere. It, it, seriously, three times in the same footprint. Yeah. In the same amount of time. And you and you guys own all of it still, right? Yeah. 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 So we, and then I had Villager and then, now, you know, Mucho Aloha, the hard yep, lemonade. Yep, yep. And we have a new hard iced tea coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I was like, we're making so much liquid. I mean, you know, we did, we sold over about two and a half million six packs of Ashland last year. Jesus. And as like a contract brewer, there's no margin in it. Right. It's really for someone who's much smaller. Right. right? Um, And so I was like, we can continue to raise money Mm -hmm. or, or like try and find a partner to merge with Mm. that, you know, we could put, like combine forces and yeah. and be much bigger and you know we found that in Ninkasi in Oregon yeah the craft beer up there mm-hmm. and so now we've merged all of our businesses together um, and then so then Wings and Arrow kind of goes away mm-hmm. and it's all under a thing called Great Frontier Holdings okay and so now it's you know hundred and hundred and fifty people a little bit a little bit more than that. Shit. And now I'm running the whole thing, yep. um, which wasn't the plan from minute one. And now, <laughs> of course, is happening. Here you are. Um, so Wings and Arrow is no longer like your. So now, company. so then I had the chance to make Wings and Arrow a beer. Yeah. And um, Saint Archer going out of business had something to do with that. Of course. Yeah, that was. Um, I mean, that was a. I felt like San Diego lost something. When that I, fucking still hurts. Yeah. Why? And like what you know, fuck? even what? if even if cores or. If somebody else bought it or, you know, it'll never be what it was. Right. And I think when it goes out of business once, you can't resurrect it. It's like, yeah. and it wouldn't be the same. No. Right. Like, um, I wanted it back. Yeah. Did um, you try to get it back? Yeah. You tried to buy it back. Yeah. You had people on board. Yeah. I, we definitely could have, we could have done it. You could have gotten it back. But they were, they had other plans and. Yeah. Um, and then when it went away, I was like, holy shit. Fuck. Ouch. Dude, I remember when I saw that the, the fucking tap room over Ugh. here changed. I was like, what's going on? I know. And it, I looked it at was... the new sign and I was just like, damn, that is not fit in. <laughs> no, it was like, uh, it was a, it was a killer. Yeah. And wings and arrow. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm doing it again. Yeah. And, and doing it again, does it mean building it and selling it? Right. Um, doing it again means like, I'm going to do a beer like my way. Mm-hmm. And honestly, St. Archer was like softer than I wanted it to be originally. Like in, from a brand standpoint? Yeah. Okay. It, for some reason got softer. I don't know what <laughs> fucking, ha- I don't know what happened, <laughs> but like I started, I, I don't know what happened. So wings and arrow is what I've always wanted. So this is like full on hundred percent, like yeah. exactly what you wanted. For yeah. One hundred percent. Now this is like, this is what I wanted St. Archer and then Harlan. Um, I'm not a part of that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I sold my equity in that. Yeah. And so, um, and Jeff and Anthony have like taken it in the direction they want to do it. It's, it's all good. Like we're, it's yeah. all good. Um, so then I never got to like really see that one. Mm-hmm. I had left the business and was doing Ashland and, yeah. um, and then, and rightfully so Jeff and Anthony made it theirs. Sick. And, um, but still I was like, well, fuck, I missed another chance to like, um, <laughs> so now wings and arrow is like exactly what I have wanted that like pissed off, like, fuck you. Yeah. Brand. So when, when you decided to, to switch wings and arrow over, or you had the opportunity to, to take that name and that, what build that brand mm-hmm. did you go and hit mikey up and and paul no they're already a part of all this stuff so they're they're rolled into it uh-huh. already yeah so they're all everyone's you know everyone's still here yeah taylor knox yeah everyone's here you know yeah. everyone from villagers here by default right but then a lot of those guys were all involved in ashland yeah so um it's been fun like the same guys yeah you know that's been pretty cool and then we've added a lot of new but if you like look at the roster of who's involved, if you really like write everybody down, mm-hmm. it's the best in surfing, skating, and by a mile. Yeah. Right? Yeah. By a mile. It's it's pretty impressive. That's pretty rad. Dude. We just don't talk about it that much anymore. Yeah. But um, but yeah. That's crazy. Now man. it's funny, like everyone's doing beer brands and like now all these guys know what equity is mm-hmm. and like all you know, it's funny. It's it's true. Saint Archer kind of changed a lot of shit, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that was a it was a game changer, big time. I just don't think about it like that. I yeah. guess. Um, <laughs> well, it's a fucking blur, dude. Yeah, it, it is so fast. And it's it's like, a blur, and like I've you know moved on to other stuff, and yeah. Um, but but it was really just a special kind of time. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously been super successful in building brands and having the vision like from a, a visual standpoint, yeah. a creative standpoint, but you're also CEO. You're the one running the show. Yeah. So can you speak on managing people, yeah. building teams, the leadership aspect of, of building the brands that you have? Yeah. I'm not good at it. Um, I think like I'm, I am good at hiring great people Mm -hmm. to carry out the day-to-day vision Mm -hmm. and, you know, holding folks accountable to, you know, what our goals are. Yeah. Um, But I think having that overall big picture vision of where we're going and, you know, decisively making decisions all the time, Mm -hmm. I'd say that's a majority of it. Yeah. Right. I think that's one of my like strong suits, I guess. Mm -hmm is making decisions really, really quickly yeah. and like going, nope, this is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And there is no like wavering off of this is what we're doing. Yeah. And I think that's, that's one of the harder, I think that's hard for everybody. That kind of like decision-making or decisiveness is what pushes you into the deep end mm-hmm. of starting your own business. Right. Right. And then you're just kind of consistently doing that mm-hmm. if you want to continue to move forward. And I think most people, that's where the fear kicks in, right? The right. fear kicks in in the beginning where you go, I don't know. What if it fails? What if my wife or husband or whomever leaves me over it? Mm-hmm. What if this? What if that? What if we don't have any money? What if, like, instead of just going, I'm doing it, fuck yeah. it, done. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. So I'd say, like, day to day management, um, I've learned that that's not me, right? I'm not. If it was me, we would be fucked, right? <laughs> yeah. um, it's it's just not me, and that's my role, right? Right? Like I'm best in my role, and then you know, and they're they're not better or worse. It's just that's not my role. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a super important thing is you know being self aware. Yeah. In terms of like understanding that from the very beginning, because if you did try to be yeah somebody you're not, and no ego, man. Like there's yeah. no ego. I just want to fucking win. Right. I don't care like what happens, how we get there, who do, who I don't yeah. I just want to win. Right. And winning is when you know you're the fucking best. Right. Right? Like it whatever your vision is, it's like you you know you could walk by somebody who's competing with you and they go, "Yep, yeah. we're fucking 
and I can look at them and go, yeah, I, I won. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I beat your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, that's all it is for me. Right. It's nothing more than that. It's yeah. It's that competition, dude. It's, it's I, fun. Yeah, I had, heard, I had heard you speak on the, the no fear aspect yeah. of being in business. Is it no fear or is it having courage? Because Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's a good question. I, I think it's like having the – not being scared. I'm not scared to fail. Right. I'm I like my, my, like, and this is the perfect example with your business. I'm just trying for us to be perfect. Right. Like perfect operationally, perfect brand, perfect relationship with the distributor, perfect with getting on all the retailers, perfect with this and blah, 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 all the way down the line. Right. And like, when you say I was perfect, well, I can't control whether people buy it. Right. Right. So if nobody buys it, then I go, well, we lost. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm not okay with mistakes along the line. Just fucking shoot. Like when I go and I could look at an investor in the eye and go, dude, we fucking did it. Perfect. Yeah. People didn't buy it. What do you want me to tell you? Yeah. I thought they would too. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Like just like in here, Mm -hmm. services on point, products on point, fucking location. You have the money, you have the the brand that nobody comes into the shop. Yeah. What are you going to do? Right. You go, well, we, we lost. Right. I'm okay losing like that. When you fucking give it your all. Yeah. I'm not okay losing because we fucked up. Right. Like, I'll, I'll kill myself over that. Yeah. Like, I I'll, mean, there's definitely fucking things that happen where I'm like, God damn, we just, that's yeah. not the best that we could I, do. Or I will literally kill myself to like have a perfect yeah. operation. Yeah. Cause then I think then I can sleep. And even like knowing I'm working towards it mm-hmm. is how I don't think about the investors. Right. Cause every single minute of every day I'm thinking about how this business can be perfect. Yeah. And you know, like everybody has their opinions of, well, you should do this and well, you should, oh, I know. And like, well, you should shut the fuck up. You know, what I like to say is you should start your own beer yeah, business then. <laughs> go ahead. Be my guest. Yeah. I'll see you in the trade. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think a lot of people have, I'd say most people that invest are insanely supportive. Like yeah. we, especially around here, dude, we have the best people that are just constantly flying the flag. Yeah. But you know, there's always a couple that are investors from out of town that are not, you know, maybe seeing it and are going... Maybe you should do things differently. Hitting you up. Always. Giving you uh, some advice. And now they hit up Wes, right? So now like <laughs> I'm a little bit harder to get a hold of. So yeah. Wes is the one, unfortunately, yeah. that like gets the brunt of the, what yeah. the fuck is going on over there? Oh, that's funny, dude. Yeah. Um, okay, so Wings and Arrow is, you guys are doing it. Yeah, it's What's, on draft. It's on draft. I saw you guys picked up a bunch of fucking bars like right away. Right away, man. And when yeah. are we going to be seeing some cans? Next month. Bottles too? Or just cans? That would be nice. I'm working on it. Is bottles like a whole different thing? Yeah, it's a whole different deal. It's okay. But it's I've been thinking about bottles because no one's doing bottles. Everyone's cans now. Yeah. Because so it's like, easier, no? So let's, yeah, and it's cheaper. Okay. It's like, cool, now let's go back to doing bottles then. Right. Everyone's doing cans. Fuck it, let's go back to, yeah. I'll be the one to go, we're doing bottles. Yeah. Um, which I think would be really cool. I think bottles are sick, man. They're super yeah, sick. I think they're super sick. They feel better in your hand. They're like, you know, it's a it's an uptick over a can. I feel like there's like this nostalgic for aspect sure. to it. Sitting on a beach with a bottle. For sure. Yeah, that's that's going to be sick. Dude. So you guys are now going to be brewing everything up in Oregon. And here. And, and we here. brew in San Diego too, yeah. Okay, so you have what, off Miramar? Somewhere? Yeah, we have a place downtown SD. Sick. Um, Mission has made a lot of stuff for us through the years. And okay. We're super good friends with them, and and we'll be making some in the Pack Northwest too, because the brand will be going up there. Yep. Um, and then we're working on opening a tasting room in Oceanside. Oh, sweet. Uh, so we're excited about that. It'd be fun to have one of those again. Cool. Um, would have been rad to go back into the old Saint Archer. You know, I, I was tried thinking about that. I, I tried. Like, you tried. Duckfoot beat me to it. Shit. Yeah. So I tried. Me. Yeah. That would have been ideal, right? Full circle. Yeah. But yeah, and then I think the St. Archer Brewery, I think like there's a they it, there's another brewery in there now mm-hmm. and it's crazy like the whole thing's gone. Yeah. It's crazy. That's fucking trippy, dude. So obviously watching St. Archer blow up, Ashland blow up. Another brand that recently has blown up has been June Shine. You guys yes. were working with them a little bit through Scout. Definitely. I mean, 
Can you speak on some of the similarities and parallels? And like, I'm sure you've got, you guys have all chatted and Yo, had yeah. long yeah. in depth conversations. Like you had a bunch of experience yeah. like going through it the first time. And yep. those guys are going through it the first time. Like, yep. what were you, what were you guys talking about? What were you telling them? Yeah. What kind of advice were you? Uh... Yeah. I think for Greg and Forrest, um, you know, I know St. Archer was a big inspiration for them. Yeah. Um, and those guys are, I mean, June Shine's been an incredible story. Yeah. Right? It's been fun to, to be a small part of it at, with a scout in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of watching, yeah. you know. Um, it's been it's been pretty incredible. And, and hard come, you know, beer is easier, right? Beer, yeah. everybody drinks beer. Right. Right? Um, even though, like, through COVID, like, nobody wanted to get fat, so they drank hard seltzer because there was no sugar. Yeah. Right. And they're an alcoholic at 10 a.m. and putting it on the gram. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and the same went for June Shine. Right. Like people were stuck inside and they could drink maybe a better for you option to mm -hmm. beer. And so they grab Ashland or June Shine or Cutwater. Right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's been like those guys, what they've done is it's, it's almost like more impressive than St. Archer because. You know, kombucha, hard kombucha is not like, you know, it's not a huge category for one. Mm -hmm. Not everybody knows what it is, two. Mm -hmm. And three, like, they had to educate people, right? That's fucking hard to do. Yeah. And I think they've done it in spades, in yeah. in San Diego especially. I mean, it's it's a huge brand. Yeah. Yeah, it's like they've, they've really done it. They've done an awesome job. And for sure. Looking at the the San Diego like business landscape, what is it about San Diego? Like, why did you why did you move to San Diego to start your business? It's the crappier capital of the U.S. Uh, so many other. So it's like a sink or swim. San Diego is like San Diego is the best city in America. Yeah. You know, I don't fucking care what anybody says. Right. I don't. I mean, that's just like top to bottom. Like, what does San Diego not have? Right. You know, it's yeah. it's it has it all, yeah. but. Um, so I think for me, it was like, I could do St. Archer and Ventura mm -hmm. and everybody thought I was doing a BJ's like they're a craft brew. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. You don't even, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm right. well, not BJ's dude. Have you guys ever been to San Diego? <laughs> yeah. They have like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. no one got it. Um, and now there's like 10 breweries in Ventura right, right now. Yeah, they're yeah. all like turned onto it. Yeah. But, um, I wanted to like compete against the best. Yeah. And I felt like if I could be a big fish in a big pond, we would have a business that we could like work at forever. Yeah. And I didn't think I could do that in Ventura, not on the scale I wanted it to be like, right. not, not at the level I wanted to compete at. Yeah. And so it was either like, we could put it down in San Diego. Everybody fucking hates it. And I'm like, back to trying to convince people to make movies, even though I just lost all their money. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And, but like, you know, we, we tried. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, there's something about San Diego. Like if you, if you can do it and do it right, it's like, it's, it's the best. Yeah. I feel the same way. I mean, we moved down here to start bump and it was purely based off of just the clientele. I mean, yeah. everybody's into the same shit. Everyone's For sure. healthy. Everyone's up For sure. beach, surfing, snowboarding, skating. It yeah. just was like, I mean, there's been so many like great brands here too. That's what I was, yeah. That's what you know, like people like, are like excited about that. I mean, look at what Nixon in a completely different, right? Like yeah. what Chad and Andy did here in San Diego was incredible. Yeah. I mean, I've talked to Chad a, a little bit about Nixon and they, he says the same exact thing. It's like we move, he was, he's from Long Beach area. And yeah. They, you know, they, I mean, fuck Andy was up at Stanford in Palo Alto. I know. And they moved here because of the I industry know. and the people. And, I know yeah. it's, it's, it's a really great and special place. It's also super judgmental and yeah, yeah, yeah. challenging. Yeah. Right. Which is good because man, it, like if you're in an area where people are all about whatever. Yeah. It weeds it, it out. Yeah. You get, well, and there's brands that come and go, you know, Yeah, they try and I think a lot of people try and emulate to like what other people have done. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're not kind of the original, yeah, it's hard to emulate. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of, a lot of that. Damn, man. What a great story. Was there any point in St. Archer or any of the brands 
I guess villager, you were like, you had this little aha moment in the sense of like, fuck, I need to like switch it up. Mm -hmm. But was there any point when you were starting St. Archer where you were like, fuck man, I don't know how this is going to happen. Were you like in your own head and then just had to get up the next day and keep going or was it all rainbows and butterflies? Yeah, no, it was was good. I don't think like that Mm -hmm. as far as like, what if, and, and I've been super fortunate to have a wife that doesn't. Janine has never asked me, what if it doesn't work out? Yeah. What if you don't do this? What if this? What if she doesn't do that? Yeah. And I, she's always just kind of supported. Not that it's been easy. Right. The whole time, right? right. It's it's not. Yeah. There's like moments of fun. Everything right. else is fucked, basically. Yeah. And I mean, stressful and not fun. And um, I wouldn't say I've enjoyed all this. Right. If you ask me, like, have you had fun? I'd say not really. What's the, what was the... Like what, what fucking annoys you or like what moments were oh, like, man. God damn, like this a, mi- a, mi- a million, a million <laughs> every day today. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. shit that happens that I just go, fuck. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, um, it's every day. Yeah. Right. It's, I think, but I never had that. Um, what if this doesn't work out? I always, I always thought it would. Right. Um, and I didn't know what work out meant maybe right um but i was always confident that i could continue to do it yeah um so yeah i never that never kept me up right it's always the stuff that i've had the hardest time with is the stuff i just can't like control yeah right even like when you're trying to put everything together you want just answers quickly so you can like move and move and like but people don't work at the same pace i was gonna say it's that's probably the most annoying thing for me is like the slow to respond oh, kills me. It's, I mean, the money, you know, mm-hmm. when you're operating businesses that are not profitable, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm so sick of fucking raising money. <laughs> I fucking hate it. Yeah. I really do. I hate it. Yeah. And I've, I've like done it enough now. Yeah. Um, I think that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do the merger. Yeah. We're profitable. Yeah. It's a, it's a, really big business you know we'll do 60 million in sales this year wow um but i, I don't want to raise money right. i'm sick of it i i don't i don't i'm just i'm done is it the owing people money no kind of thing, it's, just like, a, it's just it's just the like whole the process yeah I, it's the whole like and i've never liked it maybe right. that's why i've been successful at it i'm not like a fucking salesman right right i don't want to be sitting here with you asking you for this yeah and if you don't do it, I'm still going to fucking get it. Yeah. And if you say no, you're on the list. Yeah. Right. And there's a lot of people on the list, man. <laughs> you know, like a lot of, a lot of people have said no. Yeah. Right. Um, and like, it's funny, you know, and you hear all the stuff that people say, you yeah. know, and um, all the people that have talked other folks out of doing it. I, oh, it, I talked other like, oh, friends man. of like, ah, oh, fuck, I you shouldn't invest in that. Talking people out of doing St. Archer. There's people here in town that can take credit for that. Damn. And you hear all of it, right? Yeah. Um, which I which I enjoy. Yeah. It's fun. That's and I haven't so forgot I don't forget any of it. Yeah. Even after St. Archer. I'll still see him and be like, fuck you, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> dude, I feel you, man. That's like you grow up playing sports. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, dude. That's like, I don't know. It sounds funny, but it is a comp. It is competition. And you never and like, and like the people that sugarcoat. Like I've never understood. Like, you know, especially craft beer. Everybody's like trying to be friends and blah blah. blah. Fuck that, man. Yeah, I'm not here to be friends. Right. Like I'm here to fucking win. Yeah. And I want them to buy my shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like yeah. I don't want to be buddies. Right. I don't want to go to your house for a barbecue and like know your family and like I want to put you out of business. Yeah. That's just straight up. Yeah. And no one talks like that for some reason. They what like, do you think that is? Because I've noticed that know. that shit that, that's like has disappeared from surfing. Oh, is, dude, don't even get I could I could talk about this forever. Well, let's fucking talk about it because I've missed the days of fucking Bobby going off. Or I like mean, dude, Andy there was, saying some shit or Bruce There was some nothing shit. better than Andy. That's what I'm saying. It's nothing. like I wa- I don't even watch new surfing. No, it's, I watch old it's vanilla. Old. I fucking find these old sports. Yeah, dude. It's, Jordan. Right. You know, like, I mean, there's, you know, Jordan's still pissed. You're dude, watching The Last Dance. And I was going to say. Yeah, he's like, fuck Isaiah. Yeah. Right? Like, he doesn't, <laughs> dude, There's no, he doesn't forget. Yeah. I think that's like you, you know, there's a lot of that. I think if people were sitting here on the on the negative side, right, of, mm-hmm. of me, 
they would say Josh is super fucking intense. Mm -hmm. He's super hard to work for. Mm. Um, he's insanely competitive and he's going to put you through the fucking furnace. Mm -hmm. And if you can like make it, well then great. Yeah. I mean, he will do, he'll do anything for you. Right. But like the people that haven't, it's gnarly. Yeah. And I know that. Yeah. I, I know that, but I also know that's what it takes to win. Right. And on like, on my side, it's like a lonely place. Yeah. You know, like how many friends do people like, how many do you have? Right. Like how many people like that just are, you know, you're not the nice guy and it's, you're not the like warm and fuzzy and I'm not going out and trying to be everybody's best friend in town. And mm -hmm. like, I never do any of that shit. Right. And I think when you kind of like stay behind the curtain yeah. and you have that kind of personality, then people just make up shit about you. Right. And I'm fine with that, Yeah. but it's lonely. Yeah. It's a lonely place. Did you lose friends when you started business? Tons. Like friends and that you've I, known forever and it was no, like... No, no, I think... And going through it all, I never tried to be friends with anyone. Yeah. Investors, employees, really. Yeah. Um, I just... I don't know. And I think people get turned off when you don't like reciprocate wanting to... Especially this is like a clicky spot. For sure. Right. And yeah. I never, I never bought into that. Right. Yeah, man, it's, you can't be successful or be competitive without giving it a thousand percent. And if you want to do it 70%, it's, it's tough to work with people like that for sure. And I think it's gnarly too, when people are, you know, like I'm trying to kill them all. Right. Right. And I think that's like a gnarly person to be around. Right. And it's like intimidating kind of, and, and like, and, and I know I'm doing it, yeah. but I don't care about any of that. I don't care, dude. I, <laughs> yeah. So give me your take on, on the surf right now. What's on the surf world? Yeah. I hate surfing now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think changed? What is it? Well, I think like, well, we, we were lucky. I mean, first of all, there, there's no, I mean, as far as a competitor, Kelly is, will forever be unmatched. Right. Right. Like there's no, um, he was, he was so far and away a better competitor than, you know, who's a gnarly competitor that nobody ever talks about who North County's own Cardiff's Rob Machado. Oh yeah. Dude. He's a killer. Yeah. Rob, you Rob's don't finish awesome. second in the world. Not giving a fuck. Yeah. Rob's awesome, man. He's, he's a killer. Yeah. Right. Like, dude, he wants to fucking win. He comes from a family of athletes. Mm -hmm. His brother's like the most successful high school baseball coach in San Diego. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, there he's a killer. Yeah. Right. Um, but Kelly, think, yeah. but Kelly's on another, right. Kelly's Michael Jordan. Yeah. Right. Um, but Andy was the only dude who went, well, fuck you, man. Yeah. And that was like Andy, that Andy Kelly was the best. Mick yeah. has a lot of that. Yeah. For Mick sure. had a lot of that too. Yeah. Um, and then when those guys went away, it like, and social media and the internet nice. ruined everything. It ruined sports, right? Cause like when we were kids, Jordan and, um, all these guys before him and then after him, you didn't know anything about him. Like yeah. think about surfing. Like I said, I didn't, you didn't know anything about Chris Malloy. Right. You didn't know anything about Taylor Steele. Yeah. You didn't know anything about like you read the magazines and, and they were like God, like people mm -hmm. and then now you know everything that lebron james eats for breakfast yeah and you're like well fuck i hate that cereal <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah and like but jordan you didn't know anything you yeah. just the only way you could align yourself with him was buying jordans or right. or like wearing your his, the stuff and just like that's your guy yeah and surfing i mean these guys are all on instagram all day john 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 is He's the only one yeah. that I really, um, you know, you just don't know anything about him really. Yeah. He keeps pretty quiet. He doesn't give you much. And you know who else I like? Actually, I love the Brazilian dude after the make or break, which I loved mm -hmm. Medina. Yeah. Dude is a killer. He is a savage. And so is Jack Robinson. I like Jack, dude. Yeah. He's got a little. Yeah. He wants to fuck you up. Eye. Yeah. And I love that. I mean. He's not my favorite, Kanoa, mm -hmm. but he wants to fucking kill you. Yeah. Dude, you know who I fucking, uh, what's his face? Mikey, uh, Mikey Wright. 
Yeah, he's gnarly. I wish he would compete I more. Know. He's a fucking. He's, he's so my. Good. He's like right now. I think he's. He, my, he's just. Fucking I mean, gnarly. my. I mean, Taylor's like my favorite in my heart yeah. for forever. Yeah. But if I like pound for pound, the last like fifth. I mean, dude, Dane. I mean, yeah. Dane's, I mean, come on. Well, he, like, he, I could go for days on like Bobby's. He's the best. So, like when he goes backside, he's just it's fucking pretty, insane. Dane is the dude who like. There's only been so many guys that have like really, like moved the needle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Dane's one of them. Yeah. You know, like Dane moved the fucking needle. Yeah. And like that's you know that's really gnarly to do his surfing like, not not as much like right now he's got three kids and shit now you know yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. um Dane like five ten years ago that's oof, crazy un un unmatched yeah yeah man it's sad I I like. I can't get super excited about a lot of the surfing that's going on. Yeah. I like the fucking I the know. attitude. I like I the know. aggressiveness. You know what's been great? I don't know if you've watched it. The Stab series, How Surfers Get Paid. You know what? I haven't watched that, but I I need to. Tonight. Yeah. It's... It's yeah, I was the, talking it's, to Chad about it, and he's like, bro, you got to watch it. It is the best. They're yeah. doing an alcohol one. Okay. Um, they hit me up to do an interview for it. And Sick. you know, they want you to talk a bunch of shit and I'm like, I don't know if I want to, Oh, they want you to like, yeah. Talk tell shit stories. About other people and yeah. Shit? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Do I really want to ask you like how much money you made? Yeah. All that kind they, of shit yeah. There's all, there, yeah, all those. It's funny. All the things I've seen written about that. Yeah. Um, what's well, funny. Cause I was like, should I ask them that? But I was like, it's kind of <laughs> fucked up to ask somebody like that. Yeah. I mean, dude, I've, I've made enough to where it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. 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 And I think like, and I'm still doing what I was doing. I'm the same dude. Yeah. You know, like nicer house, nicer cars. Yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, same shit. You ever watch the bomb hole, the snowboard podcast? No. Chris Grenier and, uh, Eric St Eastone. No. They're out in Utah, but they fucking do every snowboarder and shit. And they always ask how much money were you making? Yeah. Like, they just had Egon and he, they were like asking him, what was your contract with DC and shit? And he was telling them. Yeah. But it was, they always, without fail, they yeah. always ask, which is so for funny. I feel. Like. I mean, it was like a, it was a crazy, it was a crazy deal, yeah. you know. Like, um, but I think, like, I, like I said, I didn't really feel much, yeah. And I didn't really, I wouldn't even say that I was like proud of myself for what I did, right? And and never really have been, you know. Like, um, I like kind of funny random story. Mm -hmm. I had a. Um, uh, the general manager of the Phil I'm a huge Eagles Philadelphia mm -hmm. sports fan. Why? Uh, my family's from Philly. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, unfortunately, <laughs> I've actually we've been on a pretty good run. Yeah. Um, I'm still not over the ball. I'll never get over that. Yeah. Um, I'm still not over 2004. Anyways, <laughs> I um, the general manager Howie Roseman's an investor in in um, Ashland and these brands. Sick. Uh, we got connected through a couple of mutual friends and. Um, I, my mom, the only trip like we could really afford was I would go to, um, Philadelphia with her and that's where our family is at every Christmas Sick. and we'd fly in and I'd look down, it was the vet then. And that's where the Eagles played. And, um, you know, we got tickets a few times and, um, I would just be like, you know, I was the hugest Eagles fan. Yeah. And then I was flying in right before COVID to have dinner with him. And I was like. Dude, I fucking did it. That was the moment. That was the moment. Not making all no. the money, but this moment here this where moment. you're like meeting with this. I'm looking out of the person. window, flying into Philly, and was like, I'm here because the general manager of the Philadelphia Eagles is an investor in my business, and I'm going to his house for dinner. The five year old me would have been like, dude, I don't know what you did. But he fucking did it, man. That's fucking awesome. And dude. that was the moment where I went, dude, good job. Yeah. And it was just a quick, you know, like, um, and so it's funny, like I have a tat, I have an Eagles tattoo. Mm -hmm. Most people think it's because like, I'm a super fan of the, which is true, mm -hmm. but it was like that moment yeah. that made the Eagles like the, one of the more special, it was just, a, it was really cool to like finally feel that because yeah. it's, it's a bummer to not feel that. Yeah, that's gotta be kind of weird to be numb to it. It is, and, and then, I, it's because it was the I wasn't really, and it, like the money's caused like a lot of issues too. Like it's been really great, but like 
people asking you for shit and uh, oh there's been a well, million like old friends or just family like, oh really friends people think they should get x when they were never even investor like mm-hmm. crazy shit man yeah 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 <laughs> so there's been a lot of stuff that like all the stuff that you like see in, yeah. on tv and yeah. it happens yeah yeah it really happens that's fucking wild man. yeah well shit dude I think that's a good little story to end on. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. That's great, man. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, dude. you're I really welcome. really appreciate it, bro. Yeah, for sure. Really cool to hear it Too firsthand. Easy. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Right on. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>